Hi everyone, uh, good afternoon from Vienna. Welcome to my YouTube channel, Making It in Austria. I'm your host, Adela Mejijanic, and today I have a very special guest, uh, Marianne Penche. So I hope I pronounced the last name correct. <laughs> Welcome, Marianne. Thank you for, for having me here. And please don't be stressed because of my name. It is difficult. Actually, it is Bence, but everyone, for everyone in Austria is Bence. So I, yeah. I can live with it. Please don't be stressed. It is okay. Thank you, Marianne. Welcome to our channel. Let's start by you introducing yourself uh, to our audience. So what would you like to share with us? Who's, who's behind the name Marianne? Oh, very good question. I had a, a smaller conversation this week uh, with a future uh, team member mm -hmm. in the company, and I also considered what would uh, be the first thing what I would say about me. Hmm. I am a mother. Maybe I would start with it, but of course I am also a wife and a female colleague, a team member. I am active in the um, employer branding field or in communication field in general. Uh, I am now a part of a marketing team at an IT company mm -hmm. um, where I can work with very interesting people and uh, in a very interesting field. So uh, where I am now is an IT company, which is uh, not a product company, but a project company. So we can have the chance to get to know and learn more and more about um, digital solutions mm -hmm. everywhere and our life is so digital especially nowadays right so it is a very adequate thing i am quite familiar with it but of course still i am a bit stranger in the field because my background is um, somehow more connected to culture and fine arts and contemporary uh, arts and so on um, but but regardless, I can very much enjoy my my everyday life in this IT um, mm -hmm. field because I can work still for and with cultural topics with great people. So mm -hmm. I would sum up my personal maybe with this intro. Mm. Can you walk us through your daily business day? So what does it mean to be an uh, employee? employed in IT, you're not coming from the, I, you don't have an IT background, right? So tell us a little bit. So how does it, I'm very, very curious. Yeah, it's a very interesting thing. Uh, when I started my career, I never thought that I will be in the IT field. Um, as mentioned, I was somehow uh, always very, very strongly connected to culture in general. I'm coming, I'm coming uh, from Hungary originally, and I started my career there. Um, I worked uh, with books, we, we edited books for children, for example, and I also um, worked in a small agency where we were responsible for uh, advertising. Um, so my professional background is um, somehow connected with media. I am a journalist originally, uh, and also a, a language teacher, Hungarian language teacher. And now I, I <clears throat> find myself in the IIT, which, um, yeah, of course, not a big surprise because my husband is uh, a, a software developer or, mm -hmm. yeah, actually a responsible person for a bigger team in IT. Um, of course, I was always inspired by him. Mm -hmm. And the other thing that, um, when I, when I changed my life, when we, when we moved to Austria, um, I also had to, uh, yeah, somehow restart myself. Mm -hmm. And it was clear that um, with everything I can and I ca could do, uh, it will or won't be possible in Austria. Um, because of course I can, can be a Hungarian language teacher, but maybe it is not uh, so easy to live with it mm -hmm. for a longer term. And also I can maybe try to work as a journalist because I um, can imagine that I um, could have developed myself. But uh, if you also want to be motivated for a longer term, then mm. you also 
need successes. And yes. that's why it was somehow very um, adequate that I, uh, um, after I tried to, to teach uh, children and adults, for example, uh, during my uh, maternity leaves and uh, when my kids were uh, younger, uh, after that, I, I thought it is also a nice opportunity to improve my skills uh, in general uh, within the communication field, because it is also somehow um, connected to my profession. So journalism and media with communication, it was the, the, the most focus in my, um, yeah, on the university and what I studied. And uh, IT is a very... So it is everywhere, right? So yeah. especially nowadays. So that's why it was clear that if I would focus um, on community building still, which is very important uh, to me, especially living in abroad and, uh, and focusing also on, on, uh, on communication, then employer branding as an approach uh, was somehow a field where I could feel that, yes, I can find myself again while I can support others really with mm -hmm. all of my skills I have. And um, I had more um, clients actually from the IT field uh, when I was uh, self-employed and I stayed here. And I, I have to confess that it is a great match because I can support them and I can learn from, from the tech guys and girls a lot every day. Yeah. Super nice. Um, thank you for sharing with us, Marianne. Coming to the um, to the question, when did you and how did you move to to Vienna? So, what was the the tipping point? How did you make the decision? Hmm. Yeah, interesting, uh, <laughs> interesting question. Because if I want to answer it quickly, then I would say it was an adventure for us as a family. We had a child. Uh, he was two years. Mm -hmm. Yeah, two year old, two years old, and we decided, okay, we can we can do it now, and maybe we won't do it later. So just try it out, and just try it out whether we can live and work mm -hmm. somewhere else. Of course, the circumstances where we lived um, were also not so perfect. So we had motivation to try out something new and maybe more more. A safer uh, environment, for mm -hmm. example. So we have been living in Vienna uh, since 2011. So this year it will be already 10 years. Mm -hmm. um, and when we moved to Austria, then yeah, as mentioned, it was an adventure. But of course, it was also uh, clear uh, since our older kid um, was not more alone because my, uh, our second child uh, was already on, on his way. So at, at the point when we moved, it was clear that I will focus more on the children at that point. And my husband uh, uh, found the job and actually it is a classical setup. You know, you move as a wife with child or children, um, your husband will start here uh, in a position uh, where you can support. And it was clear that we agree that it is it is the case mm -hmm. now, and it is also clear to me. Regardless, it wasn't easy because, of course, I didn't know anyone here. Um, I had to find my ways, being a mother um, in a foreign country and foreign culture. And uh, although it is only Austrian, only from Hungary, so the distance is not so huge. Mm -hmm. And the cultural distance or, or uh, differences are also not so huge, I would say. Yeah, regardless, it was easy. And uh, yeah, mm, after that, uh, when we had our second child, somehow it was uh, also clear to me, yes, I can do that, support the whole family and being, being with the children mostly. But I also really want to... Uh, try out myself somewhere else. Somewhere else meaning not only being mother, and I also thought I can be a good mother if I also can find mm. myself, my person, my yeah, everything which is interesting for me. So it was it was a very challenging time, 
of course, because the children were young and uh, uh, not so often uh, sick, I wouldn't say, but it is, if, if a child is sick, it is also always um, a challenge. Mm. And of course, they are already older and this problem is also um, is in other perspective, you know. But at the beginning, it was somehow connected to, to everything, which is, which, which mean, meant for me everything which is new. Mm. And having new things can be very good, but also very challenging. So yeah, after this, this decision, having this adventure, we moved and we started here a very new life. And uh, I needed uh, one and a half, two years um uh, for myself to find possible ways how to start and what to start uh, and luckily i am still uh, on my way so the ways are ongoing and the topics are ongoing and it is good yeah. maria did you speak german when you moved to austria yes i i, I learned german in the school in hungary which is which is one could say and think, oh, what an uh, advantage and how good for you. But it doesn't mean that you feel yourself comfortable because Austrian German is quite different. And uh, spoken German, spoken Austrian German, it's a huge, huge difference. So it wasn't easy at all. And I felt myself and I feel myself also sometimes now too um, as a stranger because mm, yeah I am capable uh, to work in German I also capable uh, to work in English mm -hmm. but uh, neither German nor English are my mother tongue it's 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 clear and it is a crucial question I studied Hungarian language so actually, I, I, I coming from um, this direction, um, somehow from linguistic direction. And if you cannot perform <laughs> so well in, in, in foreign languages, um, yeah, it is, it is somehow so difficult. It can be difficult. And uh, if I have problems uh, here and I feel myself as a stranger, then I, I always somehow have the feeling that it is very, very strongly connected to, to the language and culture things. Mm -hmm. mm. So yeah, knowing German doesn't mean anything, in my opinion. But I can, I can also say uh, it's worth it to, to, to work on it. Mm -hmm. And if you, if you are, if you have courage, enough courage uh, only to speak, then it will be better and better and easier and easier. And yes, maybe you won't be perfect. And I am also imperfect. And it is very important to know that you, you may allow yourself uh, mm -hmm. the mistakes and everything because yeah, it is part of our development. And mm -hmm. yeah, I think it's okay. <laughs> Marianne, uh, what would you advise to parents like yourself back in 2011 who are considering to move to Austria now so maybe they are watching this uh, from a different part of the world and thinking I want to move abroad or I want to move to Austria so how would you advise them to prepare any tips huh. especially regarding Austria you mean or yes uh, we yes. can talk mm -hmm. Austria of course I only um only know more details about the differences between the two cultures, Hungarian and Austrian one. Mm -hmm. I also can approach this question um, from the direction of knowing the Austrian business men and women, for example. I would say, and of course, compared to the Hungarian market, I, I definitely have the feeling that if you want to start a business, for example, in Austria, um, being a parent and a working parent, maybe you also have to. But it is also true if you only uh, are a parent um, that uh, this community is somehow uh, mostly somehow um, closer a bit um, mm -hmm. compared to the other where I come from. 
-hmm. but I also realized and learned that uh, you may not generalize because mm -hmm. you always have your experiences with very concrete people. Uh, your neighborhood is yours and your small environment and community uh, uh, is very special and also depending on you because your behavior is also very mm -hmm. uh, much define uh, others' reactions, for example. So, and being a parent in Austria, of course, I experienced when I uh, was on the playground with my children that other parents weren't um, <laughs> somewhere in the middle of the playground with the children, but I was there. So it is a difference somehow how close you are mm -hmm. uh, to your children and how, how close um, the others are. It is also very interesting, but once again, you you may not generalize because you also can uh, see other Austrian people who are very close to the children, literally and physically, so in every sense. And um, yeah, it is also very useful, uh, in my opinion, but I learned here, for example, that you as a parent can allow yourself uh, leaving your child a bit alone and not do everything for them, with them. Of course, you have to support them. I don't say no, mm. but uh, it is also for me a bit different how we support children in Hungary and how, how to support them uh, clever, maybe. It is, it is maybe also a question of personality. Of course, it can be, uh, but these are maybe my first thoughts if it comes to being a parent in Austria compared to the other uh, country where I uh, am from. Mm -hmm. And how was the integration for you, Marianne, with the kids? So it was it easy to find, I don't know, ki kindergarten or, you know, making friends, um, yeah, expanding your circle? Mm -hmm. um, thank you for this question, because I can, uh, I have the opportunity now to, to convey my uh, thank you toward my children because uh, because of them it was always possible for me to find ways to other people mm. and it is a very nice thing uh, if you are a stranger outsider everywhere but your children are not uh, they 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 are somehow so natural and they they know the language and if they don't then who cares uh, mm. they are really uh, so spontaneous and also yeah they they helped me a lot personally mm -hmm. I always had this feeling mm, yeah and besides that integration for them and the kindergarten of course for the first firstborn uh, child it is always a bigger question mm. compared to the younger one uh, because uh, actually we as a family for the first first uh, boy we had to we had to arrange everything for him and uh, create a new environment and new possibilities for him because of him uh, and for the young, younger one it will be obvious everything mm, yeah school which direction um, yeah 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 where and with whom and so on it is somehow uh, very independent on uh, where you live Mm, but regardless, it, it was always the case that we uh, as parents had to somehow be very creative. It comes to the, the older one and then for the, the second one, it was always a bit easier. Kindergarten, very concretely uh, for us, was um, in a district, district where uh, we live within or uh, with or in a very diverse community. Um, it was it was also very good to see how many people are uh, on a concrete place and uh, how uh, diverse the whole community is. And I think it's also good for the children to see it and also mm -hmm. the opportunity. And then we moved uh, within the city. We, we switched kindergarten as well. And then um, my, my older, son started the school in another district. Uh, there we, of course, had to restart ourselves as a family again. I don't say that it is wrong, uh, because I think 
especially during Corona times, mm -hmm. uh, being able to restart yourself is a crucial question. Yep. Uh, I think, though, that it can be difficult for children. Mm -hmm. um, still, I think it was the right decision for him and for us as a family as well. We find um, an, a, a school where um, he could learn more and more uh, German, especially because um, he was born in Hungary. And OK, he, he was only two or two and a half when we moved to Austria. Um, and my second boy uh, was born here in Vienna. Um, you may think that okay for both of them are for both of them it is very clear that they are very good in German. Actually, they are. That you can feel the difference. You can feel the di difference also if it comes to um, the point of view how my older one thinks of being a Hungarian and how my my younger one does interesting things and also yep. how um, how one one of them um, affects to the other one so of course they influence each other um, but kindergarten and school are very important places and communities for the children you have to find the right one for the children and for yourself mm -hmm. I would say Thank you, Marianne. Coming to the point of networking, so how did you build your professional business network here in Austria? When you asked this question, uh, my first thought was, oh, how uh, lucky I am, because I had the chance to work in a co-working space in Vienna. Mm -hmm. mm, I spent there uh, two years or a bit more than two years. I cannot remember exactly. Um, I was self-employed uh, mm -hmm. back then and um, I could um, plan my time and also arrange my, my schedule um, according to the um, event planning of the co-working space. I was responsible there for events and communication in general. Uh, the founders are also from Hungary but of course the main goal of the business of the co-working space was not uh, being a Hungarian uh, business people in Austria. Mm -hmm. It is also part of, of, of the um, business, of course, but uh, focusing on being in Vienna mm -hmm. and uh, supporting the communities in Vienna, the business communities as well as other communities. And we, we, <laughs> we, we how nice it is, we, so the co-working space was actually um, very supportive if it comes to communities, different mm -hmm. communities, and also uh, very diverse communities mm, mm, and the events there um, were about uh, trainings, workshops, cultural events, private events, uh, what you can imagine, every, everything. Mm -hmm. And um, when I was there as a, of course, I also acted there as a host. Mm -hmm. uh, besides that, I also could um, take care of the communication thing in the background. So I also could uh, nurture uh, the social media channels. Um, besides that, I also could um, talk to the people who uh, visited us. Yeah. And it was really a very nice and huge opportunity to get to know really lots of people, especially from, from fields which are so interesting in Austria. So it is the, the flourishing environment, you know, uh, full with startups and full with very interesting um, business units and companies, small companies and bigger ones, uh, very creative people who organize workshops and very creative other events there. And you can and you could exchange with them there. I learned a lot. And besides that, it was an event uh, space of the co working space. And besides that, of course, there were a co working space and a, a traditional one where co workers could, could work and uh, um, Mm -hmm. have a desk and use the space and uh, being in a community uh, but for me personally the events uh, uh, were the, the most crucial part and uh, I also could uh, organize my events there so uh, my, my business focus was on um, building the Hungarian community and supporting the community and also organizing 
for them, for us, uh, cultural events here in Vienna, not only for adults, but also for children. So we also could use the place there. I really felt myself at home mm. because I also could um, yeah, be creative if it comes my 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 goals. And also I also I also had the feeling that I am really useful if it comes to the co-working spaces goal. So we could cooperate. Uh, uh, in my opinion, very well. And it is very crucial and also a very nice memory for me. Mm. So I hear it very often from other uh, people that I interviewed, uh, the way they build up their networks here was through actively engaging in one or the other community. Mm -hmm. So when they came here, so they didn't know anyone. Uh, and so they started from, for instance, uh, Caitlin was saying yesterday from Ted, or TEDx Vienna yeah. community when she moved from uh, South Korea for the first time here to yeah. Vienna and she was okay where do I meet what, what is the best probability for me to meet people like myself who are interested in innovation in technology and so on and then she went there and started uh, voluntarily voluntarily there for uh, for the TEDx Vienna community and that helped her to meet many great people and and expand her network and that's uh, and it took from there basically now it's a different story years later yeah i think it's a very good example and also a way uh, in my opinion as well um, that can be very um, useful for all of us if we start everywhere else because yeah who knows maybe we will start every, everywhere else soon or not soon uh, it is good in my opinion, being open mm. <laughs> for opportunities where you can, uh, yeah, get to know the people and also uh, figure it out how how can you contribute. And yeah. after that, you will definitely experience, I am sure, that you can contribute not only on a voluntary basis mm -hmm. later, but yeah. also having the feeling of uh, being useful and also somehow connected literally connected and integrated yeah and it is of course doesn't take two minutes it is a mid-term long-term goal but it is the goal yeah and it's it's worth uh, pursuing it especially you know if you're planning to stay here it's the it's crucial it's it's the society here that values relationships uh, and uh, in a good way. So it, it's just good to know how the system works so that you don't feel like an outsider and excluded. So <laughs> it's always good to know it's really very important how, how it works and how you find a job and, and uh, you know which events you need to go and visit and where you need to where you need to be. It's very, very important. Thank you, Marianne, for sharing your, your insights. Uh, before we wrap up, uh, I would like to ask you if you have uh, which books would you like or a book would you like to recommend to our viewers? Yeah, um, I have a very interesting reading and I'm not uh, done with it, so I cannot sum up the learnings. But um, I am now an um, employee somewhere, so in the IT field, as you mentioned, and my, my main focus is somehow the experience, employee candidate experience, people experience in general, I would say. And um, my main goal is how to support our people uh, that they are happy. If the people are customers or employees, doesn't matter. But uh, if we want to have successful businesses that, in my opinion, it's crucial having uh, happy people. And um, of course, if it comes to being happy and if it comes to people, uh, especially in an employer branding field, we um, very well think that uh, we should support our colleagues, the employees. Mm -hmm. True. I also am for it 100%. I also think that uh, we also should think uh, a lot of the topic of leadership. Mm. not only the employees. And the book I'm reading is um, from an Argentinian psychologist, Dr. Tomas is the author. Uh, he has a longer name, but it is so uh, difficult to pronounce <laughs> that he, <laughs> he uh, chose only uh, having this Dr. Tomas as a drthomas.com, you will find uh, his, his details and the books as well, and TEDx uh, talks, for example. And um, the title is "How uh, Why Do So Many Incompetent Men Become Leaders? Oh, 
<laughs> you know the book? I heard that about the title and don't know the book. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I thought first thing, hmm, it is actually one of my favorite topics, the gender topic, you know, yeah. men and women, women. And of course, I'm very supportive if it comes to women in tech, especially. So I really find myself uh, there and I hope that I can contribute there, although I am not literally in tech, but somehow I am in tech. Uh, and I started um, reading the book and uh, the most provocative question of the book, and let's see what is the answer, yeah. um, whether it is a gender question only or a question of being competent or uh, confident. And I think it is a very interesting approach. I am really, very motivated to read it. Uh, the book. I don't know when I will be uh, uh, when I when it will be finished, but I, I hope that I will have more answers because I really think um, these gender questions and also re, uh, especially in leadership uh, is a crucial one. We really should talk more and more about possibilities and uh, and 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 uh, the setup there. But maybe it is not only a gender thing. Yes. So. Um, I, I hope that I will find my answers too in, in this story. Let's see. Thank you, Marianne. I will definitely um, put the title of that book in the description of our talk. So for all our viewers who want to check this book and get the answers, I will definitely check at least the, the sample, the free sample on Kindle uh, tonight uh, so that right. I have it <laughs> safe. <laughs> uh, Thank you, Marianne, for being our guest today. It was a really pleasure to have you and to hear your story. Thank you for taking the time. Um, and to Thank all you our- Thank you very much. Thank yes. you very much. It was very nice to be, to be here with you. Thanks for the Thank questions you. as well. Thank you so much. I will link your contact details as well uh, in, in the description of this talk so people can write you and, and approach you with, with questions with what we discussed today. And thank you all for watching today. So if you like this video, so uh, comment, like, subscribe, share with your own community. And if you have someone that you would like to, me to interview in the coming months, so please let me know, so, uh, you know write me a comment uh, of this video or send me a LinkedIn message. Always looking forward to find and inspiring people around us here in Austria and uh, invite them for a chat. So thank you all and have a great, great day. Thanks. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.